I'm Cherie with Technomadia. Uh, we love staying in state parks. We try to seek them out in our travels quite often. We love that they're a little more in nature, um, maybe access to hiking trails. They get a seeing, scenic spots in a state. And they usually have at least electric and water hookups. So it's a great blending for us, somewhere between boondocking and RV parks. So we love them. And we have different state park systems that we love more than others. The Texas state park system is definitely one of our favorites. And we try to optimize staying in them when we're passing through the state. And it's kind of hard not to pass through the state. It's kind of big. It's kind of in the middle of the country and it kind of takes a couple days to get across. So odds are in your travels, you're going to be coming to Texas at some point and you're going to be in Texas for a while. And their state park system has some of the best places to stay, some great remote scenic places and places to get out and explore. And we always try to mix in a couple new ones every state, every time we pass through the state when we can. So I wanted to share with you some of our tips and tricks for staying in the Texas state park system because each state's park system is slightly different in how you navigate it. Now the first one is when you book your reservation, you can do that at the Texas state park site. They are in process of changing it. So by the time you view this, we just realize it might be changed. But presently right now, you book just a spot. You're not uh, selecting a specific site. Um, you, they assign your site when you get to the park at most of the parks in the state right now. That is changing probably by the end of 2018, however. So you're just reserving the spot. When you get to the park, they might either assign you a site or they might ask you if you have a favorite site. And if it's available, they'll put you in it and you get that for your entire stay. Now what we found is if we get to a site and we don't like it, if we just look around at the other sites that we like and they're empty and they're not already taken, if we either go back up to the front desk or we call them, they'll be happy to switch us over to it. And we have done that several times. We've also done it so that like we'll watch to see the sites that we really like if we have an extended stay and we see someone is uh, checking out the next day is we'll ask the park manager if we can switch to that site after the other person has checked out and then we get a site upgrade. So that's a great thing. The one thing that we really love about the flexibility of the current state park system and we will miss that when they go to assign sites. Now another thing is when you look at the price of the site, that does not include the daily entrance fees. So if the site is $20 a night, you're also going to be paying a per person entrance fee into that state park and that can add up pretty quickly, especially when it's like five to seven dollars per person. So what they do instead is you can buy their annual state park pass. It is available to non-residents of Texas at the same price. It's $70 a year. And this gets everyone in your vehicle into the state park included. How it works for those of us RVers is it does include your motorhome and or RV and tow vehicle. So it gets both vehicles in as well as all people that are traveling with you. So that gets those fees waived. So then you are just paying that nightly rate. Um, and then you're in. It's great. Uh, the state park pass is $70, like I said, so you want to go look to see how many nights it makes sense for you to get it or not. But another thing about the park pass is they give you four coupons on it for half off, I think it's your third night. Second, second night. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. The second night of a stay. So really, it only comes out to costing $30 once you factor in those four coupons, assuming you use them. So what we do is the first time we stay at a state park in the year, we pick up the state park pass, which you can do right at the front desk when you check in pay the $70 for it, and then it is good for one year through the end of the month of the next year. So it's good for a full 12 months plus. Um, and then we'll just make sure that we're staying at least, for us, for two people, usually it makes sense if we're staying in state park systems more than six nights in that year. Which So we just optimize for state parks when we're in the state. Um, some other things about this, the Texas state park system, uh, they do have a no public consumption of alcohol rules in all of their parks. That means you can drink while you are in your RV, and we've talked to park rangers about it, and as long as you're not being obnoxious, they're not going to be too uh, restrictive on it, and they're usually okay as long as you put your alcoholic beverage in a container that does not look like alcohol. So 
drink it in a plastic cup or a solo cup. Don't bring out the wine glasses and don't drink beer right out of the bottle. Even in your own sight, you could get fined for that. And definitely don't walk around uh, drinking alcohol of any kind. But if you are at home in your vehicle, you are fine. And one last thing about the Texas State Park System and something we just learned this year. So there is a 14 day stay limit when you make a reservation and just like most state parks across the country. What's unique about the Texas State Park System is if you leave early, they will actually refund the days that you don't use. So if you're in a place and you're not sure how long you want to stay, go ahead and book a longer stay than, or longer than you think you might want to be there. Go ahead and pay for it up front. You only pay a one night deposit when you make your reservation and then you pay the balance when you check in. Uh, so what we did, like we're here at McKinney Falls State Park in Austin, Texas during South by Southwest, we went ahead and paid for a longer stay because we know that if we want to extend our stay, there's no chance, there's little chance of us being able to extend our stay because of how popular the park is going to be for the next couple of weeks. So this way, we decide when we want to leave and we can leave earlier and we just stop by the desk when we check out and they'll put a refund on our account. And that's pretty cool. It makes it really super flexible. So there you go. A couple of tips we've learned about the Texas State Park system over our years of being here. We hope you get out and enjoy some of these great treasures. Enjoy Texas, y'all. Y'all. <laughs>